Hey y'all, so I'm back with Kendrick. This chapter is the final chapters of this book. We almost finished and it's the rope. Chapter one. I woke up, I awoke in darkness and lay still for several seconds trying to think where I was and when I had gone to sleep. I was laying on something unbelievably soft and comfortable. My bed, home, cabin. I could hear regular breathing beside me now. I sat up and reached out to turn the, on the lamp, or I tried to. Sitting up made me faint and dizzy. For a moment, I thought Rufus was pulling me back to him before I could even see home. Then I became aware that my wrists were bandaged and throbbing, and I remember what I had done. The lamp on Kevin's side of the bed went on, and I could see him beardless now, but with his thatch of gray hair uncut. I lay flat and looked up at him happily. You're beautiful, I said. You look a little like a portrait I saw once of Andrew Jackson. No way, he said. Man was skinny as hell. I, I seen him. But you haven't seen my portrait. Why the hell did you cut your wrist? You could have bled it though, or did you cut them yourself? Yes, it got me home. There must be a safer way. I rub my wrist softly. There isn't any safe way to um, to almost kill yourself. I was afraid of the sleeping pills. I took them with me because I wanted to be able to die. If I, if I wanted to die, but I was afraid that if I used them to get home, I might die before you or some doctor figure out what was wrong with me. Or that if I didn't die, I had some side effect like game brain. I see, he said after a while. Did you banish me? Me? No. I thought this was too serious for me to handle alone. I stopped the bleeding as best as I could and called Lou George. He banished you. Louis George was a doctor friend that Kevin had, had met through his writing. Kevin had interviewed George for an article once and the two had taken a liking to each other. They wound up doing a non-fiction book together. You said you managed to miss the main arteries in both arms, Kevin told me. Said you didn't do much more than scratch yourself. With all that blood, it wasn't that much. You were probably too frightened to cut as deeply as you could have. I signed well. I guess I'm glad I didn't do, do much damage as long as I got home. How would you feel about seeing a psych psychiatrist? Saying they, are you kidding? I am, but Lou wasn't. He say, if you're doing things like this, you need help. Oh God, do I have to? The lies I have to invent? No, this time you probably won't have to. Lou is a friend. You do it again though, and well, you could be locked up for psychiatric treatment, whether you like it or not. The Lord tries to protect people like you from themselves. I found myself laughing, almost crying. I put my head on his shoulder and wondered whether a little time is so, hold up. <laughs> I found myself laughing, almost crying. I put my head on his shoulder and wondered whether a little time in some sort of mental institution would be worse than several months of slavery. I doubted it. How long was I gone this time, I asked you? About three hours. How long it was for you? Eight months. Eight. He put his arm over me, holding me. No wonder you cut your wrist. Hager has been born, has she? There was a silence for a moment. Then, what's that's going to mean? I twisted uncomfortably and by accident put pressure on one of my wrists. The sudden pain made me gasp. Be careful, he said. Treat yourself gentle for a change. Where's my bag? Here. He pulled the blanket aside and let me see that I was securely tied to my denim bag. What are you don't want to do, Dana? I don't know. What he's like now. He, Rufus, he has become such a fixture in my life that it wasn't even necessary to say his name. His father died, I said. He's running things now. Well, I don't know. How do you do well at owning and trading and slaves? Not well, Kevin decided. He got up and went to the kitchen, came back with a glass of wood. Did you want anything to eat? I can get you something. I'm not hungry. What did he do to you finally to make you cut your, your wrist? 
nothing to me, nothing important. He sold a man away from his family when there was no need for him to. Him to. He hit me when I ejected. Maybe he'll never had to be as hard as his father was, but he's a man of his time. Then it doesn't seem to me that you had such a difficult decision to hand you, but I do. I talked to Curry about it once and she said, Curry? He looked at me strangely. Yes, she said, oh, she gets her means across the cabin. Weren't you around the place long enough to find that out? She never tried to get much across to me. I used to wonder whether she was a little retarded. God, no, far from it. If you had gotten to know her, you wouldn't even suspect. He managed to shrug. Well, anyway, what did she tell you? That if I had let Rufus die, anyone would have been sold. Everyone would have been sold. More family would have been separated. She has three children now. He was silent for several seconds. Then she might be sold with her children if they're young. But I doubt that anyone will bother to keep her and her husband together. Someone will buy her and breed her to a new man. It's, it, it's breeding, you know. Yes. So you see, my decision isn't as easy as you thought. But they're being sold anyway. Not all of them, good, good Lord. Kevin, their lives are hard enough. What about your life? It's better than anything most of them will ever know. It might... It may not be as he get older. I sat up trying to ignore my own weakness. Kevin, tell me what you want me to do. He looked away and said nothing. I gave him several seconds, but he kept silent. It's real now, isn't it? I said softly. We talked about it before. God knows how long ago, but somehow it was abstract and now. Kevin, if you can't say if you can't even say it, how can you expect me to do it? So, y'all, I will be back with Chapter 2 of The Rope. And y'all have a good weekend. And I'll see y'all on Chapter 2. Bye, my reactors.